Good afternoon, it's Roger Gilbert here, the publisher of Milling and Grain magazine, and our August issue is out back from the printer and in the mail. In fact, it went in the mail on Friday, just the day before the first of the month. But here it is, a lovely cover, as you can see, and this is reflecting our topic of the month, which is thinking tomorrow. And thinking tomorrow is all about what comes next, particularly after this pandemic, if we don't go through a second wave, uh, settles down and allows us more freedom. But to talk about the issue uh, this afternoon, I, I have uh, Vaughan Entwistle, the managing editor with me. So uh, welcome, Vaughan. Welcome. Thank you, Good to be here again. Yes, it's another fabulous looking issue, Vaughan. Uh, a lot of work's gone into it. Uh, I have to say, thinking tomorrow is on the uh, livestock side of the equation in milling terms, but this is a very heavy issue towards uh, the livestock and ingredient industry, isn't it? It really is. I, I think that's a sign of the times and uh, where the big advances are being made are in uh, feed nutrition. A lot of companies really stepping up to the plate on this issue. Mm. And uh, I, I noticed that we have stories on mycotoxin, for instance. Can you tell us a little bit about the coverage there, the surveys, etc., that we we seem to to have in the issue? <clears throat> um, I actually didn't focus on that myself. I think Rebecca did that stuff. Um, been talking about uh, the innovation that's going to go on in the industry. There's some very interesting articles that are a sign of that. Um, mm. We've got a, a very interesting article uh, by, uh, about a company called Crover LTD. Oh, They're nice. a British company. And uh, they are now pioneering the use of a robot that swims through grain. You actually place it in a silo, and they wouldn't release a photograph to you because the patents are still uh, being applied for. But uh, so I don't know exactly what it looks like. I don't. I don't think it's got a like a tail on it like a fish. But they they describe it as swimming through the grain, which allows it to be positioned with great precision anywhere within the grain stack. And you watch it on, on a. Uh, there's sensors inside the silo, so you get a graphical representation of, of what's in the silo. And then as this robot tracks its way around, it records temperature and humidity and, and moisture and things like that. And you get a live 3D feedback on what's happening in your grain stack. Wow. And I think it's pretty amazing. Yeah, is this operating all the time, you know, day and night, 24-7? I think what they do is they would put a robot into a grain stack and then do an analysis, drive it around inside the grain stack, let it swim around and give you a 3D picture. So you, if you've got a hot spot or you look for potential infestation, it's going to show where it's going to show it and it's going to show exactly where it is. That's uh, certainly is, that, yeah, that's certainly yeah. a topic of uh, thinking of tomorrow. And uh, yeah. our main feature cover, as I mentioned earlier, uh, cover is about thinking of tomorrow. And that is by Dr. Eckel. Do you recall that, Paul? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of articles about uh, the use of phytogenics in feed. We've got one from Biomen, who, of course, you know, everybody, their name is synonymous with phytogenics, and also one from Dr. Eckel. Um, and it just seems like mm -hmm. phytogenics are kind of a miracle thing to put into feed to improve digestibility. It's antimicrobial and it's also anti-inflammatory, so very important for uh, for animals. Well, what and I does? Yeah, exactly. What I like about uh, Dr. Eckel actually is written by Bernhard Eckel and Frederick Freber. And what I like about their concept of uh, within the article is that they look at the uh, SDGs, the um, Sustainable Development Goals from the FAO, uh, and they're focused. We believe our industry should be focused on three which is uh, zero hunger, which we're in the business of food. Why wouldn't be, we uh, put that first and foremost? Uh, they're also looking at um, goal three. That was goal two, by the way, goal three, good health and well-being. And uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Eckel, Dr. Bernard Eckel sort of equates this to, um, uh, to feeding animals, of course, and uh, their additives, etc. And, uh, of course, the, uh, the other one is uh, way down at, uh, I think it's goal 12. Uh, responsible consumption. So I think, you know, the industry, you know, COVID has made us focus a little bit more on what we're doing as an industry in terms of meeting the human need. And uh, we're looking to actually transfer that into meeting the animal need as well. 
So that's, mm -hmm. you know, in keeping with your grain uh, uh, technology piece, I think this is a, a very uh, enlightening uh, subject that we're dealing with this time. Uh, well, Fallon, what else took your eye in the magazine this month? Um, well, Hewlett has got a very interesting uh, new product for r rice processing. Mm. Which, if you think about it, more than half the world's population is reliant on this uh, this staple, this food staple of rice. And there's their new product is an automatic rice whitener, which was news to me. I didn't, I don't really know that much about rice and, and the, why the importance of, of whitening is. Do you know that? <laughs> well, yeah, whitening is uh, everything, of course. You know, there's a uh, quality is assessed by whiteness. Um, and and uh, particularly people who consume rice as a staple, uh, it's very important, uh, the whitening of, of rice. But yes, um, I, I, you know, until I read that, I didn't realize just the, uh, the importance that is associated with it. Okay. Um, well, I mean, Burla was also in there in our news section. Uh, they've opened a... A Burla Go, it's a new food application center in uh, Minneapolis in the States and where they can sort of experiment uh, with uh, different uh, food uh, products, mainly around biscuits and, and uh, cereal based products uh, and some non-meat products uh, or meat replacement products. So uh, Burla is doing some very innovative things as a follow up to their um, digital presentations that we we sat through or we experienced early in the year, early in the pandemic, in fact. Mm -hmm. Is there any, anything else that's taken your, your eye in the issue? Um, yeah, I actually sat in on a webinar uh, by the company TSC. It's, uh, it's a Swedish company. I can't remember now where it's yeah. from. But uh, they specialize in the manufacture of square silos. Oh, yes. And Yes. The big advantage of square silos, of course, are they're much more space efficient because you can pack the silos together, you can put them in a building or it can be freestanding. And uh, these silos are very well engineered, so the tolerances are incredibly tight. And they don't get things like dust accumulation within them because they're so well sealed from one component to the next. The other advantage with this, the square silos is you can have multiple sizes within one one kind of boxy complex of, of these silos. You can have smaller units and uh, and larger units. And one of the important things is you've got to size your silo to the throughput you need. Because you don't want the, the uh, not enough grain coming through when you need to process it. And also you don't want too much that so sits in your silo for too long. Mm. That's something I hadn't thought about with silos. You know, with, with the ground ones you tend to have just one size and that's it. So. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Interesting company. I see. Yeah, yeah. I believe they're in uh, Belgium. Uh, but I, I also uh, noticed in this issue that uh, you know, as you said, we had biomin in there, and um, but also the the reference to uh, online seminars becoming more of a, a standard format for us, mm -hmm. and um, we do run that page on page ten, which we look at uh, Mag TV which also mm -hmm. includes uh, webinars and other things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But that just reminds me that, you know, we have our own um, online milling school now. And it's, basi yeah, it's basically a webinar, but it's running every week. Uh, mm -hmm. have, you, have you sat in on those, Vaughan? To yes, I have. They're, they're very well done. They're very slick. You had some very good presenters when I was watching it. Yeah. Well, well I particularly like the detail they go into. A lot of that detail... You certainly don't get in conference presentations, yeah. and um, even though there's, you know, we've got only two hours, uh, there's only two presentations, so um, and they're quite in depth. So, and we've had some fabulous uh, comments from people around the industry, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the the fourth one is coming up this Wednesday. So, you know, if anybody's interested, onlinemillingschool.com is where you mm -hmm. find out more information and can register. Uh, I'll tell you another uh, interesting thing I've noticed, Vaughan, and uh, I know we discussed it some time ago, but it's interesting to note that we're actually linking the print version, uh, stories or features in the print version with those subjects in previous issues. 
I mean, this is uh, quite uh, innovative. You see it all the time online where you can click on a related story or pub something published earlier on the subject. But in print, it, uh, I have not seen it anywhere. And this is the first issue that I've seen it, which mm -hmm. is, was, is our own uh, innovation. So for the print, print readers. Um, also, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, we, we are using our marketplace more and more. Uh, we're also putting those little tags at the bottom of the, the features to direct people to our marketplace uh, where they can find mm -hmm. out more information related to those companies that, that manufacture mm -hmm. that type of technology. Uh, what else, Vaughan? Well, uh, we have, of course, our extrusion conferences that we've been running, and those have been very well attended. And uh, in line with that, there was an article in there by Amanda's call about their latest extrusion equipment used to make uh, pet food and fish feed. And, and uh, extrusion is an amazingly versatile uh, discipline for making all different kinds of feeds and all different kinds of consistency. It's pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, well, we had uh, Mandis Carl as our guest editor this, this month as well, didn't we? Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, the um, I think you're referring also to the uh, aquatic... Um, uh, aquaculture extrusion or aquatic extrusion conference that we held over a two-day period, and there is a yeah. there is a double-page report in here from all the speakers. And once again, uh, online conference split over two days, very intensive. Uh, we had quite a number of people signing up for that. So you know, I think that those sort of things are are providing a much-needed service that that prior to the pandemic we didn't really fully appreciate the the way that that might be taken up uh, by by industry professionals. Okay, um, um, events. Uh, any comment on the events? We, you know, we've been constantly changing dates of events. Uh, yeah, has that slowed down? Have we got firm events and dates now? But it's slowed down, but they're still changing. I mean, every, you know, it's because as this as this thing with COVID nineteen develops, I mean. Unless you've got a crystal ball, I don't know how anyone could ever set an accurate date for when the uh, economies in all these different countries are going to open up again. Yeah, well, well I know VIV is opening up in China. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think as early as September, they've got a VIV China, which is the local Chinese mm -hmm. edition. They want mm -hmm. to do something online with us mm -hmm. uh, as well to complement that. Uh, VIV itself in Asia is all guns blazing. You know they're out there uh, promoting their their upcoming uh, shows for next year. So I think um, you know there's a lot at stake actually in the exhibition uh, conference mm -hmm. area, and uh, they're, oh, yeah. they're desperate to get back into, into ac their activities back, and um, hopefully we. While there is a potential for a second wave, hopefully that will dissipate some more over the summer in the Northern Hemisphere. And we might be able to get back to a little bit more freer travel. But at the moment, as you yeah. and I know, uh, we're not going anywhere, are we? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's we, We've got to self-quarantine for 14 days when we come back home, so that sort of slows it down a little bit more. But um, at the moment, uh, we, we're just watching to see what events. But we'll be there. As soon as uh, there's an event that we can attend, uh, we'll certainly mm. be back in this one as well. Uh, mm. Anything, any final words, Vaughan? Um, I think I had another interesting article by an Indian gentleman, Bar Mr. Bardwaj. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's about pre storage silos. So, what do you do when you've got grain in the grain pit? You can't put it in a silo because it needs to go through the cleaning facility. So he's talking about having a certain set, one you know, maybe or multiple silos that are used to store the grain. So you bring it into the into the uh, receiving pits, and then you transfer it into um, these pre these pre storage silos before they go into the cleaning facility. And once it's cleaned, then it's got to go into another silo. So. So he was uh, talking about that in this article, ways to estimate the, the number of silos you need, so you can keep that you know that throughput going at a, at a decent rate. 
Yeah, so, I mean, that's a different concept entirely. Is that just because of, say, the use of equipment, the equipment, cleaning equipment, for instance, is, or transporting equipment is not, not up to coping with pressure at key harvest times? I think that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. I know that uh, we're also focused on silage, uh, sorry, storage uh, in our issues, and every month we have a good chunk of the magazine devoted to storage solutions mm -hmm. and storage projects. Um, which are, are really interesting to read, and this is this would be just just one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, milling and grain does cover that that area before the miller of uh, grains and how they arrive at the mill and how they're pro, uh, pre-processed. Uh, which reminds me, before we go, that um, what have we got in this month? But John Buckley, and uh, John Buckley, who's been writing for us for maybe close on 30 years. I mean, the guy's a dynamo. He's, he's been delivering. Uh, and he's doing a roundup uh, every two months of the situation of s involving grains and, and beans and oil mm -hmm. seeds, etc. from a perspective of a miller. What does a miller need to know? What does a feed miller, flour miller? So that's in this issue, and it's uh, very revealing as well. And finally, Vaughan, uh, did you get the opportunity to read uh, the uh, interview this month? This is uh, um, Ho Bo, Hao Bo, who is the chairman of Zen Chang. And uh, it's great to have him back. Uh, he was in our magazine maybe six or seven years ago. He's one of our first interviewees. And he's back sort of explaining a little bit of the background on, on his company, of course but also the consequences of COVID-19 on his business. So um, I think there's something in this magazine for everyone. And, yeah. Uh, with, with a good focus this month on uh, livestock, food production, storage, mm -hmm. etc. Any final closing words, Vaughan? Uh, well, the magazine just keeps getting better and better. Uh, and if, if you're interested in, in having an article about what you do, uh, published, we're always looking for editorial content, so please keep us in line. Mm -hmm. It costs nothing to be in the magazine, and you're being seen by people all over the world. So, And it stays around for a long time. You know, people don't just read it one month, it's there for the duration. So it's a very important mm -hmm. method of getting your messages across, and obviously the technologies that you're developing or using, and nutritional mm -hmm. products, etc. Okay, Vaughan. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you're full, ahead, full steam ahead with the uh, next edition, the uh, September yeah. edition. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing you this time next month. Okay. Thank you, Vaughan. Thank you.